Back at the LA Car Expo, there's a splendid orange 2019 Corvette ZR1 convertible on the show stand, flickering under the lights, being stared at by admirers and estimated by contenders. A little more than 100 miles away, at the most seasoned perpetual street course in the US, at the western edge of the Mojave Desert, two beat-up ZR1 cars hold up in a pit carport. They're dirty, with two or three vehicle lifetimes between them. One is canvassed stern to nose and stick on swirly cover, generally connected, with bits of the brilliant red paint appearing underneath. The other is half secured, yet the uncovered parts are incomplete with trim pieces missing. They're dead autos strolling, since pre-creation autos like this end their merciless lives in the jaws of a crusher. We're not here to take a gander at them, obviously. The 755 strength small blocks, coercively fed with enormous superchargers, shake to life. Reverberating off the carports, they relatively stable unlimited, however without the teeth gritting reverberation you get when you straight pipe a thing like this. I swing to Taj Jewiter, pleased father of irrationally fast Chevrolets, and inquires to whether the autos here today are rivalry fumes or something. He wrinkles his nose a bit. Nope, these are the stock funnels, road legitimate. The ZR1 is a couple of decibels louder than the Z06, he says. To call this a modest representation of the truth is liberal. This is the loudest Corvette the organization has ever constructed. That is essentially the ZR1 in microcosm, everything's turned up a bit. Juichter and his confidants are joyful, enlightening us concerning things that their new LT5 motor broke amid the four years they created it. Like dynamometers. Heaps of them. The fume stacks would get so hot from the impact heater that is this engine that they'd break. Jordan Lee, the GM small block program chief, reveals to us this like the pleased father of a particularly raucous child. So they attempted water cooling planes. At that point, demonstrating the reality to which the GM engineers took this issue, they tossed some cash at it and manufactured the stacks out of Inconel, a nickel chromium super alloy. That did the trap. It took 10 times as long to approve the motor yield, Lee says, in light of the fact that so much stuff broke. Specialists cherish these stories. They're great stories, however. The autos pull in, and we slip into a Hans and open confront head protector, at that point into the Sparco container. Here's a tip from us to you, if you see something with 755 horsepower and a 5 point tackle inside, and the person to one side was in charge of pressure testing the whole vehicle progression bundle, take care of your belts. At that point fix them up some more. Scarcely ready to inhale is a really decent target. Michael Tung is the youthful, wonderful designer alongside me, going to release a great deal of brutality on Willow. We visit for a couple, at that point he lights off down the pit path. Notwithstanding the way that the supercharger, settled under a thin shaker hood, jabs straight up out of the motor sound into the airspace before us, there's very little supercharger whimper. Whatever may be there is totally muffled by the howl from the quad channels, as the ZR1 crouches and hustles. There's some wheel spin, slight and sporadic, as the performance traction management, set at Sport 2, tries to make an interpretation of contort into forward advance. It has a challenging situation to deal with, the tires are fresh out of the plastic new, nice and all, and chilly. I'll need to relax until the point that they warm up, Tung says, doing nothing of the sort. Warmth, while extraordinary for tires, was a terror for the Z06. The ZR1 endeavors to address this with an entire 13 radiators, on programmed autos, including four new front helper coolers, keeping in mind the end goal to lessen temps. There's another set down transmission cooler in advance, so generally speaking there's a huge amount of funneling going ahead and once more from the transaxle and differential. Juichter claims the program doesn't itself to fault for the earlier warming hardships, clarifying that the auto can hold revs higher than the manual which causes higher underhood and admission air temps that could overpower the past autos. The Z06's fixes incorporated another hood and more vents, however the ZR1's warmth administration framework was approved to a more elevated amount to keep this issue in any case, at 100 degrees with a full tank, versus 86 degrees and less fuel for the Z06. Will it help? It's too soon to tell, yet in view of the time Jupiter spent on cooling, it's a sore spot and we wouldn't wager against it.